Jeff Williams here with SEOblues.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up, level, fine tune, and adjust your RP4 shaker table to get the best results for fine gold recovery. All of this and a whole lot more coming up. Excellent. And for those of you out there that don't know who I am, my name's Jeff Williams, and I'm a certified geologist, and I've been in the gold mining industry for over 40 years, and I'm going to show you how to get gold too. Now, if you're already subscribed to my channel, welcome back. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button right now. Don't forget to hit the bell icon too, so you can be notified when we make future vids. Excellent! This is an RP4 shaker table. They're used in small-scale mining to recover fine gold especially from load deposits after it's been crushed to a fine powder. The older models came with a screen, the newer models don't come with a screen. You feed it in through the top here, it shakes it down, the old units would classify, the new units you have to pre-classify. There's waters that come out of the spray bar, they're diffused with this diffuser. As it comes across, the lighter material is shook and across until it falls down into the trash trough right here. The heavier material, which is going to be your black sands and golds, travels across and most of it's going to go into your number one and number two port. These are the ones you're worried about most. The number three port and then this trough is mostly going to be trash. In the trash trough you have a series of pockets and if you have a classifier on there that feeds directly into it and any of the large gold that's too small to pass through will travel into there. On the newer units that don't have a classifier the large gold is just going to simply walk straight across and go into the number one or number two port. Now the size of the material that you should run on these is about 20 minus, no more than 50 minus. And if you got an older unit with a screen on it, it'll classify for you. All our P4 units have a spray bar on them that is controlled by a small ball valve. And the reason why is because you're going to want to adjust your water rate or your water feed as you have different types of material on there. And of course that'll run in conjunction with adjusting the level of the table. Now when you're adjusting the table, this is your adjustment right here. You're going to adjust up or down. In conjunction with that, you're going to adjust your water. Now when you get your table, it usually doesn't come with a stand. We built the stand ourselves because it was a lot cheaper than trying to buy it. And when you go to install it, make sure it's anchored and not sandbag because the sandbags aren't strong enough to keep this table and its throw in place and it's actually going to shake it loose. All right, you can see where we bolted this one to the floor. There's one here, there's one on the other side of here, and there's one on the other side of here. You're going to level the back section here first. So this back section has got to be absolutely level. Then you're going to level the back side of it has to be absolutely level. So you got two points. This point and this point to level. Don't worry about the front. You're going to use shims to level it. And it's very important that this bull is level. That's why I say I don't trust sandbags because there's too much movement. And if this stand isn't level perfectly, it's going to have a direct effect on your settings. Now the back of the table is hinged. You can see the hinge here. There's one here and there's one back here. You can see that the table does move on these hinges. Now these hinges have to be bolted down to your stand. When you go to set the RP4 table up, you're going to notice that this adjustment bolt sits right on top of your stand if you buy a stand. Now when we built this stand, we welded a nut down here on the bottom and that's very important because when you go to use this table, there's so much vibration and shake that this thing will actually start to move up and down. And I've seen a lot of people out there have to strap this lower section to the bottom of their frame. So if you're going to build a stand, make sure you weld a small nut in there so you can thread this adjustment rod, this adjustment bolt into it to keep it locked in place. All right, now you have your number one and your number two port, number three port, and then of course this is your trash port or your trash trough. And when you get the table, it's going to be open like this. You're going to need to put something here that will feed down into a bucket. This system operates on a recirculating water principle. Now the reason that is, is because you're going to add a surfacant to it like jet dry. And that's going to drop the surface tension on that water. If you have fresh water coming in constantly, then you're going to have surface tension on there and that fine gold is going to want to float right on the top of it. So that's why these tables have to have a recirculating system. And then you're adding jet dry into it. Alright, one more thing you're going to want to add to your table when you get it is a light. 
You're gonna to wanna to put a light here so you can inspect and you can actually see that line of gold. It's very important. When you go to do your adjustments on the ball valve for your water adjustment, and then on this adjustment nut to raise or drop the table angle, you're gonna to wanna to look at it and see where that gold is walking. And you wanna get that gold to walk right into that number one port there. And then you're gonna have a few pieces that straggle into your number two. Everything in the number three is gonna be trash. And of course your trash trough is gonna be nothing but trash. Now you're ready to run some material. Now most of these units are built with a GFI so you don't have to worry about getting electrocuted in case water gets on the control box here. Throw your switch and it'll start shaking. I highly recommend feeding the material in wet, right up here in the top. What you're looking for is the line right here of heavies. That's why I say a light is so important right about here. I've got my gold line right up in here, but I've got such dirty water, it's hard to see. So I'm gonna shut that off for you. Very important to have a large reserve of water, because if not, you're gonna get your small reserve dirty like that. And then you won't be able to see the gold line when you're trying to make your adjustments. So you should have large tanks, 55 gallon drums or bigger, the big square tanks, and then have one feed into the next and the next. And then that way it acts like a sediment pond. So what you want to do is when you finally get your adjustments done, you're going to take this lock nut, turn it all the way down, and it's going to prevent this from backing out and affecting your adjustment. You can see my magnetite here. I got some hematite, I got some sericite. This whole line right here, it's going into my number one. I got some little tiny, tiny gold right there. And then my number two port, not so much. It looks like trash. And then of course my number three port here is all trash. Now to adjust this line, this gold line, if you want it to come down, then you adjust the table down. I mean, that's a no brainer. And this whole gold line will walk this way. If you adjust the pitch of the table up, then the gold line will walk this way. So that by doing so, you can adjust the pitch of the table, you can move that gold line back and forth. By adjusting the water flow, that's also going to have a direct impact on where your gold line is. So I'll run this at three quarter, if not wide open, when I'm running my material. And then I'll just work with the adjustment bar. You're going to need to put two very flexible lines coming off of this into a container. I like to keep my container in the water. This one, I usually feed in with this one. This is both in my book, trash. And they'll feed into a large five gallon bucket. Now a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll build a line that comes out from here because this, after a while, creates a large mess. Where you feed in here, you can see all these riffles. Their job is to help break up the material. But also, I've actually seen pieces of gold get trapped in this corner over here, so don't forget to look there. It acts as a natural trap. Don't put them outside because the sun will warp this plastic and as soon as it does the table's trash you might as well get rid of it make sure you check the tension on the pulleys grease the bearings because they're going to get dry from time to time now if there's anything else that you think is important that people should know about these tables leave it down in the comment section all right now we got this table from a company called 911 metallurgist it's a company up in canada and they're really good a guy that runs the outfit is david i want you to give him a call if you need one of these units they got many jaw crushers all the way up to ball mills they've got everything just let them know that jeff and slim sent you and he'll hook you up with a great deal I'm going to leave a link down in the description. Wait, I'm going to get on out of here. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams with who you better know who saying you got gold ore you want to liberate. We'll get an RP4 table. Don't hesitate. Take care, everybody. Oh, yeah, see the little pieces of gold? Oh yeah. Take the water up real quick. Let me check this out. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Wow. Look at all that gold. Oh man. Yeah, there's a piece of wire gold, see it? Yep. And look at that fine gold. Oh, oh man, nice. I, I can see it constantly even in the first bucket. Look at that.